Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today you will learn about ACL tears on MRI. Anterior cruciate ligament or ACL is an important ligament which helps in stabilizing the knee joint. MRI images, especially in sagittal planes, are very helpful in visualizing the ACL. We will compare the normal image, the normal MRI image of ACL with ACL tears. These are T1 weighted images in sagittal plane. This is the knee. This bone is the femur. And the bone over here is the tibia. This bone is the patella. We can also see the Hofa's fat pad appearing hyper intense in T1 images. And this is the ACL. This fibrous, hypo intense dark band is the ACL. It inserts on the medial aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. Its tibial insertion is on the anterior part of the intercondylar eminence of the tibia at the tibial plateau. So this is the appearance of the ACL. We can also see part of the posterior cruciate ligament, the PCL, in this image. The PCL is posterior to the ACL. The image on the right shows a complete ACL tear. In this case, we do not see the normal fibrous band, the slanting fibrous band in sagittal plane. It is absent. There is absence of the ACL in its normal location. It is present down here in a horizontal orientation. This appearance suggests an ACL tear, a complete ACL tear. The Blumen Sat line is the line drawn parallel to the posterior surface of femur along the roof of intercondylar notch. A second line is drawn along the ACL margin in sagittal plane. The angle between these two lines is the Blumensad angle. In a normal case, when we draw these two lines, they will always meet at this point, and this apex of the angle will point superiorly. So in normal cases, these two lines will not meet down here. They will meet up here instead. The apex of the angle will face superiorly. And any angle that is formed here will have a negative value. But in case of ACL tears, the Blumen set angle will be formed down here facing inferiorly. In this image, when we draw the Blumen set line and the second line along the margins of the ACL, the lines will meet at this point. The apex of the angle is facing downwards. So in cases of ACL tears, these two lines will never meet in this region up here, they will always meet in this region, facing inferiorly. The angle will have a positive value. A positive angle is seen in ACL tears. This is another case of a complete ACL tear. We can see a full thickness hyperintense area and a full thickness disruption of the ligament fibers. The hyperintense areas inside the ligament indicate hemorrhage. 
Now we will look at the Blumenset angle. In this case, the Blumenset line is drawn along the margin of the lateral femoral condyle, and the second line is drawn along the ACL margin. These two lines are meeting at this point. So this is the Blumenset angle. The apex points inferiorly and will have a positive value. These are T2 fat saturated images showing the normal and abnormal ACL. We can see the normal fibrous hypointense band. This is the ACL. Whereas in case of complete ACL tear, we do not see the band, we just see hyperintense areas indicating complete. ACL tear. This is a fat saturated proton density weighted image in coronal plane. We can see the normal ACL. This fibrous band is the ACL. In case of complete ACL tear, this region will be filled with hyper intense areas. This appearance is called empty notch sign, which refers to disappearance of the ACL in the intercondylar notch in coronal plane. These are axial images of the knee. In the image on the left, we can see the normal ACL. This hypointense fibrous band is the ACL. In the image on the right, we have a complete ACL tear. We find hyperintense areas instead of the fibrous ACL band. This type of appearance, the empty notch sign, can also be seen in axial views. Now we will look at partial ACL tear. In this case, some hyperintense areas can be seen within the ligament, but these areas do not involve the full thickness of the ligament. So this will be a partial ACL tear. The ligament is surrounded by hyperintense fluid, which indicates edema. By drawing the lines along the margin of the ACL and the lateral femoral condyle, we find that the Blumenset angle apex points inferiorly and has a positive value. This is another case of a partial ACL tear in the normal fat saturated proton density image. We can see a normal ACL, whereas in this image, there are many hyperintense areas indicating hemorrhage and edema. We can still see some intact fibers of the ACL. There is only partial disruption of the fibers. So this is a partial ACL tear. Now we will look at some secondary and indirect signs of ACL tears. The appearance of the posterior cruciate ligament is also helpful in diagnosing ACL tears. In the image on the left, we can see a normal PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament, in sagittal plane. It also appears as a hypointense band running obliquely from the medial femoral condyle to the posterior aspect of the tibial plateau. This is the normal appearance of PCL. In the image on the right, an ACL tear was noted. We can see the difference in the shape of the PCL. It has a question mark shape. It is also called buckling of the posterior cruciate ligament. This was associated with ACL tear. It is a secondary sign. A PCL angle is also used. 
It is the angle between the line drawn through the central part of femoral PCL insertion and the line drawn through the central part of tibial PCL insertion. This angle is usually more than 105 degrees in normal cases. When there is an ACL tear, the PCL angle can change and it will be less than 105 degrees. If it is less than 105 degrees, it suggests an ACL tear. This is another example showing PCL angles. In the normal case, it will be more than 105 degrees and in cases of ACL tears, due to the changing in shape and alignment of the PCL, the PCL angle will change and will be less than 105 degrees. These images show the normal and abnormal alignment of the tibia and the femur at the knee joint. In normal cases, if we draw a line that is tangent to the posterior edge of the tibial plateau, tangent means that the line just touches the area of interest at one point. So a line is drawn tangent to the posterior edge of the tibial plateau and the second line is drawn tangent to the posterior edge of lateral femoral condyle. These images are taken at the level of the lateral femoral condyle. In normal cases, the distance between these two lines is less than 3.5 millimeters and it suggests a normal alignment. In the image on the right, it was an ACL tear. The distance between the lines drawn in the same manner was increased. It was more than 3.5 millimeters and it suggests anterior tibial displacement. You can see the difference in the positions of the tibia and you can clearly see the anterior tibial displacement. This appearance is called uncovered lateral meniscus sign because the lateral meniscus appears to be uncovered by the tibial plateau. It is an indirect sign of ACL tear. In this case, the distance was more than 7 mm. When this distance is more than 7 mm, it suggests complete ACL tear. In some cases of ACL tears, a lateral notch sign is present. Due to trauma, there can be an abnormally deep depression in the lateral femoral condyle. Its measurement is usually more than 2 mm. It is an indirect sign of ACL tear. Bone contusions or bone bruises can be seen in some cases, some trauma cases affecting the knee. They will appear as focal, hyper intense, bright areas inside the bone. The bright areas are due to hemorrhage and edema. These bone contusions can be associated with ACL tears. In this image, we can see more bone contusions. These are T2 weighted fat saturated images. In the normal image, we do not see any focal hyper intense areas within the femur and the tibia. They are clear. But in the image on the right, we can see hyper intense ill defined areas in the femur and the tibia. They are due to trauma and can be associated with ACL tears. A Seagon fracture is an avulsion fracture of the lateral tibial plateau. An avulsion fracture occurs when part of the bone is pulled off by the ligament due to excessive force. A small bone fragment is pulled away 
by the ligament. Sigon fractures are associated with ACL tears. This is the point of the Sigon fracture in this image and a bone contusion is also present. A Sigon fracture appears as a small crescentic shaped fragment of bone that is evolved from the lateral aspect of the tibial plateau. Here is another image of a Sigon fracture. We can see a small crescentic shaped displaced fragment at the lateral aspect of tibial plateau. Sigon fractures are very subtle and can be easily missed on MRI images. They are usually associated with ACL tears and are best viewed in coronal planes. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.